Hannah de Rind, which was the first program I ever worked on, was such a lovely, nice program to work on uh, that I, I was never happier. I'd, I'd come out from being a miserable academic uh, and suddenly find myself doing what I wanted to do and having people recognize me in the shops and say, hello, Brian, like this story last night about whatever it was. People perceived me as being um, an aggressive interviewer, what in those days was seen as, as an aggressive interviewer. In fact, I wasn't an aggressive interviewer at all. I merely asked in quite a polite way the sort of supplementary questions that I thought needed to be asked of politicians. And that was the start of becoming famous in New Zealand, if you like, then. It was really just a matter of uh, playing devil's advocate to both sides, which is what you normally do in this sort of thing, and, and finally convincing them that really they were essentially saying the same things. At one point I remember asking the audience, had anyone in the audience ever committed sodomy? And the only person who put up their hand was a person who was a guest on the show, and that was Sam Hunt. <laughs> and he, com he confessed having committed sodomy. He was probably more honest than a lot of people. So what people discovered they now had was a goodies and baddies program, a cops and robbers program, you know, uh, a cowboys and Indians program. Uh, where, where the baddies got their comeuppance. And that's always been the, the appeal of Fair Go, the baddies getting their comeuppance. Not always big stories, small stories. If the reviews were bad, I would actually be ill. You know? So the stress of doing that was, became much too much for me, I think. And uh, in, in the end, I was quite happy to see it go. The day-to-day -day stuff of politics, um, what the government's programs are, how it's performing, what the, how, what the opposition is doing, how it's performing, holding politicians to account. There's very little of that, really.